this is uh, Charlie P. I uh, was studying uh, 1 John chapter 5, talking with a friend about the Trinity. And it seems to me we have two Trinities being talked about there. And it also, uh, having just come from a, a, a funeral with a Catholic priest, uh, constantly mentioning the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. That Trinity is a witness in heaven. And we're going to see that in, in John. We're going to let John guide everybody by the Holy Spirit to see that we're missing the witness on the earth. And you're going to see that that is the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And that is the testimony that we should be bearing, and we're not hearing enough about it. Everyone's talking about the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, and that's a witness in heaven, and we are not there. So he's concerned with what's going on down here, and the reason I'm doing this is because I'm very concerned. Uh, uh, there's a lot of family members and different people who have been sucked in by these false religions that have been here from the beginning. And I believe if you read Jude, you will find elements of that church being established. John chapter 5. This is the King James Version. We don't use any other version. In 1 John chapter 5, in the King James Version, we have, Whosoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that has begotten him. So we love each other because of uh, God. And we, uh, we know this love, it says. By this, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For his, uh, this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. But we know that they're very simple. And that is to love God with all your heart, mind, soul, body, strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. But remember, it's the household of faith that comes for us. Now, whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcomes the world but he that believes? that Jesus is the Son of God. This is he that came by water and blood. Even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by the blood. And it is the Spirit that bears witness. Because the Spirit is the truth. Now we go on to find that Trinity, the two separate trinities that are being preached, and we're only hearing about verse 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness on earth, in the earth. That's where we're concerned. And that would be the spirit, the water, and the blood. And these agree as one. Now, pay close attention. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this, is the witness of God which he hath testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. This is what we're looking at, the record God gave of his Son. And he says, John says, and this is the record that God hath given us 
eternal life and this life is in his son. He that has the son has life. And he that hath not the son of God hath not life. These things I have written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And we know him as Yeshua. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And we'll stop right there. And go back up here and make sure you see this. There is two trinities in play. The record born in the heavens by the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, which you also find in um, Genesis and you find in only John's Gospel, chapter 1. And then it says there are three that bear witness in the earth. And that would be the spirit, the water, and the blood, and these agree as one. This is the witness that we must pay attention to. And what we'll do is go back to John chapter 1. And uh, we're going to talk about John the Baptist, the baptizer. Now, the next day John sees Jesus coming unto him. And he said, John the baptizer, Behold the Lamb of God would take away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore I am, am I come baptizing with water. And John bore record, saying, I saw, ready? I saw the Spirit descend from heaven, not a dove, but like a dove, and it abode on him. Here's the witness. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending, remaining on him, the same is he which baptized with the Holy Spirit. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. Now, you can see where John is telling you just what was spoken um, by John the Baptizer, but uh, the Apostle John would share that same witness here. This is the witness that we're not hearing. The witness the three that bear witness on earth and the spirit, the water, and the blood, these three agree as one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater, for this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his Son. And that's exactly what is going on with John the Baptizer in these verses here. See? And he saw the Spirit descend from heaven as a dove, and it abode on him. This is the record. And he baptized him with water, the Spirit, the water, and the blood are the witness on earth. And that's in John chapter 5. So we're not being concerned with the Father Son and Holy Ghost as much as we are being concerned with the uh, the water the spirit, the water and the blood. These are the ones they agree as one. This is the witness of God and it says it here look it up, relax and get your heads screwed on straight. We're going to go over to a few scriptures pertaining to the witness. Numbers 3530, whoever kills any person, the murderer, shall be put to death by the mouth of witnesses. 
but one witness shall not testify against any person to cause him to die. And in Deuteronomy 17.6, at the mouth of two witnesses, or three witnesses, shall he who is worthy of death be put to death, but at the mouth of one witness shall he not be put to death. And again, and Deuteronomy, it says, one witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity or for any sin, in any sin that he sins, at the mouth of two witnesses, or at the mouth of three witnesses, shall the matter be established. Now we get to the New Testament, the mind of Christ. But if he will not hear you, Matthew 18, 16, then take with you one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. In John 8, 17, it is written in your law also that the testimony of two men is true. And in 2 Corinthians 13, 1, this is the Third time I am coming to you, sounds like Paul sick of it. He said, In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. In 2 Corinthians, we find that verse. See it? This is the third time I am coming to you. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. That's it. So when we go back to John, we know that uh, most of us as believers know that, um, you know, even in court, when you go to courts in the world, um, it's best to have as, as many witnesses as possible. And it would establish uh, the truth before the judge. Now we have the Lord himself, the Lord Yahweh, right here, saying that they be a record only in heaven. We cannot get into heaven to receive that witness, though we do have it in Genesis and in John's Gospel in the first chapter. We do have that. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So when you're going back here, you'll see it. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. Now that is the bearing witness in heaven. Also, it's bearing witness of the creation. And that's what John's talking about. And all things, uh, at the, uh, the same was in the beginning with God, all things were made by Him, but without Him was not any thing made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shined in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John the Baptizer. He came for a witness, to bear witness to the light that all men through him might believe. He wasn't the light, but he was sent to bear witness of that light. When we get back here at 1 John 5, we're seeing one of the most important, important witnesses of God himself. And us who have been called uh, definitely not involved with what's taking place on in heaven by the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. But we are seeing on earth, bearing witness in earth, that the spirit, the water, and the blood are the testimony. See? This is the witness. See it? Bear witness in earth. And if we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his son, beginning with the baptism of John. 
And this is the record that God hath given to us, eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Now, I'm not against the Trinity in heaven. Not at all. Not at all. It just doesn't bear record to what's taken place for me in salvation. For the one that's on earth, by the Spirit, the water, and the blood, these agree as one. This is the witness of God. This is the witness of God. Now, John made that clear. John the baptizer, when he was baptizing Jesus, that he was sent to bear witness of that light. And why is everybody still talking about it? Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So, you see for yourself that if you read 1 John chapter 5, pay close attention after you read verse 7 about the witness in heaven. And when you start reading about the witness on earth, you're reading about Christ crucified. I mean, Paul said that to the Galatians. He said, uh, you know, who's bewitched you? Before whose eyes Christ had been portrayed as crucified. And he also said stuff like, uh, you know, you guys would have plucked your eyes out for me. And they're sitting here bewitched, he says. Who has bewitched you? He says, I don't want to know anything about you. Anything about anything. And all these false teachers coming in, people upsetting people. He said, I only want to know Christ and him crucified among you. I don't want to know anything else. Now, um, yeah, we want to pay attention to prophecy. We want to pay attention to what's going on in this world right now. We don't have a lot of time. Uh, family members are, 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 are bowing in, in, uh, to Rome constantly and listening to um, a little bit of truth about the gospel and then to be led to pray to a deity who isn't a deity for uh, Mary can't be a deity because we know that. We know that he became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Here it is, 2018, still doing it. Um, and we have to keep going, keep on keeping on. Um, we have to keep telling this message. And this message is, is about the spirit, the water, and the blood. Those bear witness, those three. And we have John bearing witness. We have Paul bearing witness. We have uh, the, uh, John the baptizer bearing witness. We have uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, Peter. We've got Timothy. We've, we've got... Jude wanted us to contend for the faith once delivered for the saints, which I believe should be the first book ever written in the New Testament. Whoever put it together was in La La Land, personally, because you would eventually, I'm a Vietnam vet. My, my letters are in the back room from, you know, to my mother that I wrote to her. You don't go carving that stuff up. You just read that letter and don't move a word. Never, because you love me so much. And that's how I feel about the scriptures. And, and I don't call them the scriptures. It's the letters from the apostles. It's the disciples of people that walked with Jesus. And uh, this feeling that was given to me when I accepted Christ, I wanted to know what that was. I needed to know him better, and that took an awful long time. So I'm not judging anybody on, um, on uh, you know, how long it takes your behaviors to get straightened out. Mine may never. Um, I'm just a high, strong person. I got a blood, <laughs> blood pressure machine next to me over here. And uh, my brother had just passed away. And we buried him yesterday. And of course, uh, this message is the most important message that there is in this earth. That the, the witness of God is Jesus Christ and the love that he has for us. That man was beat beyond anything we could comprehend before he was nailed. And that death, I don't doubt that the he tasted death for every man, even a taste of the second death. Why hast thou forsaken me? So how could God separate from God? 
We'll know when we see him. What's important is Christ crucified and risen. And Paul said if he hadn't risen from the dead, you are still in your sins. And most to be pitied, he goes on to say, you might as well eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. I hope that you, uh, I hope that you find this uh, 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 an interesting, um, uh, little, just a little flame, um, maybe a little kindling to throw in the flame, because uh, even the, even the so-called, what they call Christian, um, they're all running around talking about the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And they can't even possibly get into heaven to see this witness. They can't do it. Because this is the second heaven up here. We can't see beyond the second heaven to see where God dwells in the north. And we can't even see that. But what we can see is what he's done for us here and amongst each other. And by the word of God, how that comes alive inside of us. And when we read it, we're just overwhelmed every single time. And uh, no matter if I handle it uh, and share it with you or uh, you share it with me, we are both partakers, like Paul said, I am a partaker with you of these things, of all these things. So I'm partaking uh, with you as I read this. And um, of course, I'm taking a little bit of the dump too, which is important. Because I don't want to feel like I did nothing on this earth. And I wasn't given an opportunity to, uh, to share the gospel or to share anything. We had to listen to this uh, pedophile, as far as I'm concerned, all of them. It's a hideout for pedophiles. And a twisted gospel and a Roman statue, female deity worship thing. And uh, it's the same as Islam. Ain't no different. All of them are all lost. Uh, Jesus Christ crucified and risen is our glory. Christ in us, the hope of glory. So it's good news. Um, so look into it and don't get hung up on that trinity. Ciao.